Grove Missionary Baptist Church virtual worship experience. We are the church that seeks to reach every adult and child holistically. Our mission is to impact our society by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with the hope of the lost receiving salvation and advancing them to Christ-like maturity, developing Christian relationships as we yield ourselves to Christ. We are located at 1821 Kansas Street in Memphis, Tennessee, in the Riverview, Kansas community, under the leadership of our pastor, Dr. Kent Hall. Join us now for praise, prayer, and the preached word. We invite you to also use the YouTube chat window for a more interactive and fulfilling virtual worship experience. So type your amen, hallelujahs, and thank you, Jesus, as we render praises to our great God.
wonderful name. I know it was the blood that saved me. That's why I'm here today, because of the blood. The power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Amen. For the God in whom we serve, he certainly is a great God and greatly to be praised. Amen. So we have come to worship the God of our salvation, to lift up his holy and righteous name, to worship him in the beauty of holiness. Amen. The Lord has been good to us. The Lord has been gracious to us. The Lord has kept us through the storm and through the rain. And for that, you ought to be excited about it. Amen. Oh, bless this wonderful name. Bless this wonderful name. We certainly uh, welcome each and every one of you. Thank God for uh, each of you who have come out today to be a part of this corporate worship as we celebrate and worship our great God. And certainly we thank God for those of you who have tuned in by way of our live stream. Amen. It is our prayer and desire that as we worship God, amen, our offering to him will certainly be pleasing in his sight. Amen. amen. Uh, we thank God again for allowing us to occupy once again this sacred space uh, for uh, that purpose few observations as we prepare to move uh, further into our worship. Uh, again, a reminder to those of you who would uh, make uh, a contribution to our Water Johnson Scholarship. Amen. That we might be a blessing to our young people who have done such a wonderful job. Amen. Uh, in the academics and on their way to graduation and on to higher education. And certain, certainly we want to be a blessing uh, to them. It has been asked uh, of each of us if we uh, would contribute uh, $25 for that effort uh, that uh, we might be a blessing. Many of you have already responded in such a wonderful way. And let me just say thank you uh, to those of you who have and also to those of you uh, who will. Amen. Uh, also, we invite you to uh, there again to take part of our teaching ministry uh, Sunday school. And we certainly invite you uh, to be a part of our midweek uh, Bible study as we uh, seek to posture ourselves under the teachings of God's word that our hearts and our minds uh, might be shaped uh, in such a way uh, that we honor him with our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Also, uh, this upcoming Saturday at 11 o'clock a.m., uh, there will be a women's meeting under the leadership of uh, <laughs> Minister uh, Mithis Smith. Uh, she's invited all of our women uh, to be here at the church at 11 o'clock uh, for uh, that meeting, no doubt of uh, importance. And then the following Saturday, the following Saturday, uh, we will, uh, in partnering uh, with uh, Methodist uh, Labana, we will be having a vaccination drive here at the church between the hours of uh, 11 and 1 o'clock. I believe those times are correct. 11, is that right there? 10 to 12? 10 to 12, I'm sorry, 10 to 12, uh, that vaccination drive will be here uh, at Shader Grove. And I certainly encourage you to share with anyone that you know uh, that has not already received the vaccine, that they can come here between those hours and receive it. And on top of that, uh, receive uh, a $50 uh, Kroger's gift card, amen, and this is to each individual uh, who receives uh, the first uh, vaccine. And also, uh, if you desire to have the booster, uh, you can uh, get the booster uh, shot during that time uh, as well, amen. So help spread the word uh, to those because we don't want to see it, want to see another surge, amen. And right. certainly we want to protect ourselves and uh, our uh, loved ones. So uh, if you will just help uh, us to get that uh, word out, amen. Also, I want to give a congratulation to one of our members who have reached a milestone in her life and in life of her business, and that's in the personality of Sister Flora Payne, who is celebrating 50 years, amen, at the Payne Restaurant, amen. Stand up back there, Sister Flora. 
Amen. If you want some world finest uh, barbecue, you want to, amen, stop by Payne's Barbecue there on Lamar. Amen. In fact, if you hadn't been, you want to make sure you do that before you go to heaven. Amen. <laughs> Because you will be blessed, amen. So we just want to congratulate her on longevity of her uh, establishment, and we certainly pray that it will continue uh, to be uh, fruitful in uh, that community, amen. So congratulations uh, to you again, uh, Sister Flora Payne, amen. Also, uh, I have a special birthday on today, and unfortunately, uh, he's not here, and the show want to be here, but uh, health just won't uh, let him be here today, and that's in the personality of uh, my dad, Deacon uh, J.C. Hall, turns 82 on today. Amen. And so, Dad, if you're listening, we wish you a happy birthday. Anybody else birthday May 1st? All right, he's all by himself. All right. Well, let's celebrate uh, Deacon Hall on today. Amen. On the count of three, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy so very much. God bless you that on today. Amen. Good morning to each and every one of you. We just wanted to invite those of you. We're having choir day on the fourth Sunday of this month mm -hmm. and we want all of you who have sang in the past to be here with us. Uh, we will be rehearsing not this coming Thursday, but the following Thursday. And then the following week, we'll be rehearsing on Tuesday <laughs> and Thursday. So we're inviting all of you who can sing to come up here and be with us for choir day on the fourth Sunday. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Superintendent, Amen, Director of our Christian Education. And we're certainly looking forward uh, to the fourth Sunday as we celebrate the music ministry. Amen. Amen. Uh, who have done a marvelous job even through the pandemic. Amen. Amen. They have uh, certainly been a blessing to us. And, and for that, we are grateful. At this time, we want to prepare our hearts as we seek to go before God in prayer uh, that we might make our, our request known unto him. And certainly, we want to continue to be in prayer for uh, the Smith family and the passing of Sister Cynthia uh, Smith Combs, who was celebrated on yesterday, funeralized on yesterday. Uh, our prayers certainly remain with the entire uh, Smith family. Also want to lift up the Shaw family. This is a family that we funeralized here at the church on yesterday. They were not members of the church, but uh, they still stand in need of God's amen comfort. So I invite you to pray uh, for that family as well. Also, we want to continue to keep in our prayer Sister Shirley Myers, who is uh, in Methodist Germantown ICU. Amen. And I, uh, in addition, continue to pray for uh, her family. Amen. Uh, as well. And uh, as also been stated, I, I want us to keep uh, Deacon Hall in our prayers. Amen. As he's going through some challenges uh, right now. But we serve a neighbor God. Yeah who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, amen. We remember all of our uh, members whose names are on our sick and shut in list uh, that God will continue to be gracious uh, unto them. So at this time, we're gonna ask that Minister Hooper would come and lead us in prayer. But as he leads us in prayer, let us in our hearts touch and agree uh, that God will by his power move on the behalf of his people. Amen. Good morning. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, holy, holy, holy yeah. is your name. Father God, we come to you this morning magnifying, glorifying, 
lifting up your holy name. We love you, God, and we need you, God. And we know there's nothing, nothing that we can do without you. So we ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, to just help us, God. Help us, God. Because you know what we stand in need of. We, we just give you thanks this morning. Yes, Lord. We thank you in all and everything that you do in our lives. Uh -huh. We thank you for this day, God, this first Sunday, that we can drink and remember how much you really loved us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we know that you love us, God. So just help us. In the name of Jesus, help us, God. We come on behalf of all those names on the sick and shed in list. God, you know who they are. You know where they are. Some in nursing homes. Some in their own homes. Some in the hospital. Yeah. Miss Shirley Miles, God, touch her body. Yes, touch her mind. Touch her heart. Yes, touch her, God, right now. Right now Please, sir. Help us, God. Yeah. Those behind prison wall, God, we ask that you would just reach out to them, touch them, strengthen them, keep them strong in the name of Jesus. We pray for this church family, dear God. We pray for each and every member, their family, their loved ones, their children, their homes, dear God. You know what we stand in need of, Lord. Yeah. We, we, we know that you are able, yeah. able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask and think. So just help us, God. We pray for our pastor, Pastor Dr. Kent Hall. Continue to stand up in him, bless him, strengthen him, God. Please, sir, uh, in the name of Jesus, we pray for his wife and his children of God. We pray for his dad. And we, 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 we just said, reach out right now, Brother Hall. We, we, we know you're watching. So stop crying. We love you. God love you. He know what you stand in need of. And we just ask that he just help us all. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Bless our neighborhood. Bless our community. Bless this city and state. Bless your people all over this land. And as we walk through this barren land, God, we ask you to just stay with us. Keep us and help us. We need you, God. And we know there's nothing, nothing we can do without you. So we just ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. We love you. We thank you. We bless your name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the privilege of prayer. Amen. At this time, we come to that portion within our worship experience where we commune together, where we come together at the Lord's table to share in the Lord's body and his blood. Amen. The hymn writer said, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilt and stain. We come to the table today out of obedience to what the Lord requires of us. As the Apostle Paul writes to the church that met in Corinth in his first letter in chapter 11, he said to them, I pass on to you what I received from the Lord, that on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks, and 
broke it and gave to his disciples, says, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it. And Jesus said to his apostles, or rather Paul shared with them, that as often as you eat of this bread and drink this cup, you announce the Lord's death until he comes again. So we come to the table remembering and celebrating what God in Christ Jesus has done for a broken humanity. As Jesus sat there in the upper room with his apostles, and he prayed and gave thanks to God for the bread and for the cup. We do likewise even now. Bow with me. God of all grace, we thank you for the great love that you have for us. So much love that you laid down your life for us that we might live. We thank you for the sacrificial death on Calvary's cross. We know, God, you didn't have to do it, but because you loved us so much, you decided to lay down your life. And for that, we say thank you. So now, God, as we come to the table, we want to be worthy participants of this cup and this bread. So I pray, God, that if there's anything in our hearts that would prevent us from celebrating and embracing this moment to the highest degree, we pray that you would remove it even now. We remember those, God, who, uh, for reasons beyond their control, cannot be here to share with us in person, but we pray that you would remember them. Now, God, bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. And let it be unto us what it was in upper room, where there you first instituted it. For it is in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. And so Jesus took the bread and he took the cup. And in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us eat and drink together. Amen. God bless you.
like him. You can search high, you can search low, but you'll discover there is no one, no one like him. and we proclaim that there is no one like you and we're glad that there is not God we thank you for again bringing us to this preaching moment whereby we await to hear a word from you speak afresh I pray again through this your yielded vessel that I will with clarity of speech and thought proclaim your word let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength, and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Nobody like Jesus, amen. What a wonderful Savior we have, a wonderful Savior we have. I want to invite your attention to the gospel recorded by Matthew, chapter 7, with emphasis on verses 24 through 27, as we seek to embark upon a new series of messages, amen, entitled Firm Foundations, amen, and I want to kick off the series, looking at Matthew chapter 7. Thank you. Reading from the NIV as it translates to New Testament Greek reads as follows, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew, and beat against that house. Yet, it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. As we look at this new series of messages, Firm Foundation, I want to tag this text, It Matters What You Believe. It matters what you believe. We're living in a day where it seems as if it, most people are trying to just etch God out. That hearing the name God or his son Jesus doesn't mean anything to some people. As I began to give introduction to this series on this past Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I shared with those listeners what is called the Apostles' Creed. Creed, out of the Latin mean credo, simply meaning I believe. And if we're going to be intentional and responsible witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ, 
then we've got to be able to do at least three things that I shared with them Wednesday. We've got to be able to define our faith, defend our faith, and then declare our faith. We'll never declare our faith if we're timid in defending it. And you can't defend that which you cannot define. Which makes it incumbent upon us to become students of the word of God. Because that's the only thing that is going to keep you in the midst of the storm. Mm -hmm. And so we share the Apostles' Creed, which is just a summary of what we believe gives emphasis to our Christian faith. Let me just read it hurriedly and I get to the text. It said, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's the summary of what we as believers believe. So in the current use of the word believe, there's really very little difference between belief and an opinion. All right. You on. have an, a, an opinion, I have one. I have a belief, you have one. But in the Bible, belief is a much stronger word. That, that, that there's a minor difference between our English word belief and the Greek word used in scripture. A belief is a state or habit of mind in which trust or confidence is placed in some person or thing. Mm -hmm. Belief is closely connected to faith. I mean, they are two sides of the same coin. Right, right. But a belief is the content side of faith. It is the revealed truth of scripture that makes up our Christian belief. Yes, faith, on the other hand, is the action side of belief. Mm -hmm. In other words, faith is acting out that revealed truth. Belief without action is useless. And faith without content is dangerous. So the biblical faith could be called belief in action. So when we say I believe in the Apostles' Creed, must, we must understand that we are affirming revealed truth and committing to act upon it as well. In this preparation uh, for these series, I have chosen to preach from Matthew chapter 7, verses uh, 24 and 27, that deals with the subject of belief. All right. It's fitting that we understand really the context in which our text sits. You see, Matthew 7 serves really as a conclusion to the Sermon on the Mount that begins back in Matthew chapter 5, Verse number three, Jesus has been preaching what has been called the Sermon on the Mount or the Kingdom Manifesto. Uh -huh. And in this sermon, he has dealt with diverse topics and themes related to what kingdom life is like. Uh -huh. He's not saying in this sermon that this is what you must do in order to be saved. He is telling you what you will do when you are saved. All right. And so starting in Matthew chapter 7, verse number 13, Jesus now lays out four sections of teaching that serve as both warnings and calls to decision. Uh -huh. He does this by contrasting two ways, two responses 
to the word. In verses 13 and 14, he talks about two ways, the narrow way and the broad way. In verses 15 and 20, there are two trees. In verses 21 and 23, there are two claims. And in verses 24 and 20 through 27, he talks about two builders. Now, it's important to stress that there are only two responses to the words of Jesus as he lays it out in this sermon. Right. The first is that you enter the narrow gate, bear fruit as evidence of your conversion, truthfully experience intimacy with Jesus, and build your whole life upon his word. Right. Or... You enter in through the broad way. Bear no evidence of conversion. Falsely claim intimacy with Jesus and build your life upon no foundation. There is no middle ground in Jesus' sermon. There are no half measures with the king. So how we respond to Jesus makes all the difference in the world. So the point of Matthew 7 is that Jesus is calling us to respond to all that he has taught thus far. So the first thing I want us to notice, and that is what each builder has in common. Okay. The first thing we want to notice this morning is what is the same thing that each builder has. Both builders heard the words of Jesus and they saw demonstration of his power. You remember back in Matthew chapter 4, we find out just really who is here to hear the sermon. Right. Uh, this crowd is the same group who has come from Galilee, the Decapolis, and Jerusalem, and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. They are apparently the same group from Matthew chapter 4 who heard Jesus teaching in the synagogues, preaching about the kingdom, and saw him healing every disease and affliction among the people. I mean, they saw him cast out demons in chapter 4, verse number 24, and they just heard the greatest sermon ever preached by the greatest man who ever lived. Yeah. So what's the point? The point is that every man, woman, and child was the recipient of God's unmerited favor. Uh -huh. They each heard and saw the gospel of the kingdom preached, taught, and demonstrated by Jesus. There was no distinctions made. There were no private sections Hell, where some were excluded from Jesus' teaching. No, every person had the opportunity to hear the words and deeds performed by Jesus Christ. So each builder received the same measure of, of grace. Neither had an unfair advantage over the other. Each heard the same words and each had the same opportunity. Everybody that's here today, you have the opportunity to hear the same word preached as everybody else. The yeah. difference is how will you respond? Yes, yes, yes. Right. That's right. But second, both builders had a home to build. Uh -huh. Now, it's important for us to distinguish just what the building is. And it's logical for us to assume that the building is a metaphor for our lives. So what Jesus is talking about is whether we are building our lives upon his gracious and wise teaching or are we not? Right. Just what are we building our lives upon? Because every one of us, irrespective of how much money we make, whether we are single or married, have children or not, regardless of our age or level of maturity, we are building a house. We make decisions every day regarding just what we are building upon. I mean, in this technical age of information explosion fast paced living unprecedented uh, prosperity and the ability to travel 
far and wide, our choices are almost limitless. But the question is not to build because every one of us has a house to build. The question for each builder is what are we building our homes, our lives upon? But then thirdly, both builders face the storm. In that part of the world, you got to understand what Jesus is preaching is mostly desert. And for most of the year, there is very little rain. And so the permanency of a home is not a question for most of the year. But however, winter is coming. And winter was very common in that particular part of the world. The sheer amount of rain that would fall would produce major flash floods on the dry, sandy ground. So the home you built in the spring, were it not properly attached to a secure foundation, it would be obliterated in the winter floods. This was common knowledge, understand, to Jesus' listeners and being a carpenter himself. I'm sure Jesus was well acquainted with what he was talking about. So the point is that he's making is that storms will come to both builders. Irrespective of what their life is built upon. Regardless of how they respond to Jesus' preaching. In other words, when the word of God is being proclaimed, Mm -hmm. remember whether you take it or leave it, storm is coming. It is often taught today and falsely so Mm -hmm. that following Jesus would make life a bed of roses, that everything would go well for you. Once you become a Christian, that that, that is so contradictory to the Bible that we cannot even consider that teaching to even be Christian. How many times have I sat, I mean, with good Christians who watch as a loved one wasted away? Uh I mean, how, how many times have I personally have prayed with people for answers That they wanted to be favorable, but God never answered in the affirmative. Right, 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 right. Which suggests to us that just because you Christian don't mean you ain't gonna have no storms. Jesus does not promise to help you win friends and and to influence people. He doesn't offer a life with rose-colored lenses. Jesus promises that storms will come to every believer. His concern is what are you building your life upon to withstand the day of the storm, to withstand the day of trials and tribulations. So those are the same things that each builder had. But then there is the difference with each builder. Look at the text. First, one builder was wise while the other was foolish. Now since each builder heard the same saw the same gracious words of Jesus It makes the distinction of wise and foolish that much more sharper. Mm -hmm. Jesus offered to his hearers a picture of the kingdom that embraces love, the truth, grace, wisdom, peace, and mercy. No one would argue that the life Jesus pointed to was better than the best option. To live a life of purpose, meaning, and substance. Mm -hmm. But however, Jesus also knew the heart of man. That there would be people. In fact, a majority, as the story of the two ways indicate, that would hear the words of Jesus and turn away. They, they, They will offer 
lip service to the gracious teaching of Jesus, but no evidence would result. I mean, they would even call Jesus Lord, Lord, but they would not serve under him as their Lord. And there's only one adjective to describe this type of builder, and Jesus does. Foolish. You see, a fool in the Bible is one who says there is no God. And despite the witness of nature, scripture, law written on our hearts, reason, conscience, and even Christ himself, they could take in all that information and still say that God does not exist. That's what Paul was pressing in Romans chapter 1. Paul says it is not that they don't know that God exists, Come on. but they are suppressing the truth of God in unrighteousness and exchanging it for a lie. Mm -hmm. So in other words, Paul is saying it ain't a head problem. Right. <laughs> it's a heart problem. And so to silence the guilt that produces, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. He does it so he can eat, drink, and be merry to his little or her little heart's content. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said, this is the one who hears and sees the work of Christ and does not do them. But there are those who hear and do. Those who hear and do are those who hear the words of Christ and they decide once and for all that this is where they belong. They embrace the narrow way uh -huh. because it is the road leading to Christ. Right. They, they, they are those who because of their belief in, and faith in Christ, they begin to bear much fruit. Come on. Imitating the one who has purchased them. So when they say, Lord, Lord, it is not lip service. It is the expression of the intimacy they truly, that truly exists between them and Christ. Uh -huh. I mean, they are, they, 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 are, they are those who, when building their life, build it upon the words of Christ in every area of their life. These are the ones who take up their cross daily. These are the ones who deny themselves and embrace the way of Jesus no matter the cost. And this is the character Jesus has of the wise builder. But then second, one built with a foundation while the other did not. The difference between the two builders was not the difference, hear me now, of foundation. The difference is that one had a foundation and the other did not. One dug deep until he hit a rock. The other put his priority just on getting the job done. One built for permanency and dependability while the other built for temporary transitory. So I ask you, what are you building your lives upon. You see, the foundation that is here alluded to are the words of Christ. They are the foundation, the building block upon which a house can stand. Jesus' word, the Bible, is the only source of divinely revealed truth. They are trustworthy and true because the author is trustworthy. And true, Christ offers us various and precious promises because he wants us to stake our lives upon his teaching and he will always come through. I wish I had a witness that know that God is a promise keeper that when you build your life on the words of Jesus Christ, he may not show up until the 11 o'clock hour, but he'll always show up. Yes, he will. But the foolish builder who takes no heed to foundation and haphazardly builds upon the shifting sand is the one who hears the word of Christ. And that is the end of the matter. 
hearing does not result in doing. Right. Right. So what are they building upon? Mm -hmm. If they deny the divine revelation of God, they are depending upon the shifting sand of man's opinion. And remember, I told you, everybody got their own belief. Everybody got their own opinion. <sighs> but I seek to stand on the word of God. Mm. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me that, 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 that we put any stock in human discovery. Mm. Yeah. Many of us, we were put and state our lives on a person or a popular opinion than on the word of God. But let me, let me help you. The popular opinion won't stand when storm comes. It won't keep you when the winds of life is blowing. It, it won't keep you when the torrential rain is falling. But I dare you to build your life upon the words of Christ as your foundation. Foolish Billy is a fool precisely because he rejects the foundation of Christ's word. And, and, and instead builds upon the shifted sand of man's opinion. But the wise builder is not so. He's wise precisely because he builds his life upon the firm rock of Jesus' word. He hears the words of Jesus and says, these are the words of life. Th these are words of wisdom. I can trust no other. Th th this particular builder is the one who sees in Christ's word shelter in the storm. This builder sees in the words of Christ the truth that does not change. You see, opinion changes. Yes, it does. But Christ's word remains the same. Jesus said himself, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will stand forever. The life that we were meant to live can only be found in the words of Christ. This builder willingly and lovingly, he embraces Christ as Savior repents from all that offends God, pursues peace with all men and the holiness that without no man can see the Lord. This builder sees in Christ's words the only permanent place of security, stability, and substance in a world of insecurity, instability, and the lack of anything substantial. This builder, this builder sees in Christ's word the pearl of great price that is worthy of the selling of all his possession just to obtain. Mm -hmm. And this one has all the reason in the world to trust in and depend upon these words because the author, that again, is faithful and true and a sure hope in a world of uncertainty. I mean, with a, in a world of uncertainty in which we live in, we need something that would give us security and stability and substance. But then third one endured the storm while the other came to ruin. Now let me kind of speculate, if you will, just for a moment. It's, it's possible that the house built on the sand may have been more elegant than the one built on a rock. I mean, after all, if you don't have to pay for the expense of a foundation, you can spend more on the house. That, that's a word for somebody because y'all hate no folk because the house looks good, but the foundation is in shambles. So, so stop hating on folk just because of what the house looks like. You don't know what it's standing on. So if you didn't spend any money on the foundation, then you can put all that other extra money in. Stained glass windows, you know, granite tops. You know. I mean, perhaps that home was about 14 square feet and built 
with both brick and mortar. Right. Perhaps it was the most beautiful Victorian style home, complete with a large, well furnished garage man cave. She said, Perhaps the house built on the rock was just this little 1,000 square foot tin can trailer with a bent antenna sitting on the roof. But it doesn't really matter. Why? Because winter is coming. And for all the beauty for all the elegance and outward signs of stability and security, the home built on sand did not have a secure foundation. But the home built on a foundation, even though it may have been a tin can trailer, when the rain came, it stood. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you wondering, it seemed like you can never get ahead, but you have anchored your life on the word of Jesus, and it looks like everybody else is passing you by. But you keep on standing on the words of Jesus Christ because the storm is coming. Yes, whether you want it to or not, the storm is coming. You can use your own meteorology Doppler system and tell yourself no storms for me. Oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> but storms come. Whether you play by your Doppler radar or not, it will come. So it doesn't matter. What your life looks like on the outside. Right, right, right. The gospel is not only for the prettiest, smartest, most creative, most together among us. The gospel is for the sinners, for the poor in spirit, for those who don't have it together. Doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't doesn't depend upon how together you are. In the final analysis, what matters is what are you building your life upon? Yes. 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 Storms. Let me hurry to close. Storms are God's way of testing your foundation. In the spring, there was no discernible difference between the two homes. It was the winter storms that provided the distinction. <laughs> we wonder why trials and tribulation comes into our lives. We plead with God and ask him why sometimes we may even shake our fists at God and demand an answer for our problems. God has already given us his answer. He allows trials and tribulations to come to reveal your life's foundation. To see what you have built your life upon. Mm. That, 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 that's a subtle difference between the character as I hover to my, to my clothes uh, of the storm upon the two houses. Uh -huh. As I was preparing the message in the case of the wise builder in the English Standard Version, it says that the rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. Right. In the case of the foolish builder, it says the rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. I don't know if you noticed the difference because it's somewhat subtle. Right, right. On the first house, the winds blew and beat on the house. Yeah. The second house, the wind blew and beat against the house. Right, right. I know you're saying, well, what's the difference, Pastor? Yeah. The first house endured the full fury of the storm. Right, right. The winds blew, the, the, it, it, it beat on the house with its full strength. Right. 
it weathered the entirety of the storm and the end of that house it stood but on the second house the wind blew against it this means that the moment the storm began with the first gust of wind the house fell because it was not built on a strong foundation it didn't take a hurricane it didn't take a straight line wind. All it took was a and the house came tumbling down. You can tell folks whose lives are built upon the foundation of God's word it because when the little wind they still stand there. And even when strong winds come, when the wind is howling, when the torrential rain is falling, you still find them standing because they have built their lives on the words of Christ. Let folks laugh at you if, you, if they will. Let them talk about you, call your holy rolling. It don't take all of that, church. It don't take all of that. Let them have their opinion. But you keep standing on the word of God. And we'll see whose house stand when storm comes, when storms of sickness come, when storms of death comes, when storms of financial crisis come, when storms of upheaval in your house come when storms on your job everybody got the hell in them and you're still standing it's because of your foundation no wonder I said no wonder the hymnologist says my hope is built on nothing less then Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. He goes on to say, when darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. Have I got a witness? Is there anybody here that you're building your life on the word of God? And when you have a good foundation, you can say to yourself, even when the storms of life comes, I'm anchored in the Lord. Ain't God all right? I'm closing here now. But it disturbs me sometimes when I see folk going through the storm and they're still standing. They, they, they might be bent. They might be bent over, moved to the side, but because they got a ship foundation, they're still standing. And I hear some of us say to those that are going through storms, ain't nobody that strong. Can't nobody handle those kind of storms and still come to church, still raise holy hands of God give God a praise off their lips. Some of us trip on the fact that they still stand and say they're just faking it until they make it. But let me help somebody. It's not that they're so strong. It ain't that they have all the strength. But Jesus is a promise keeper which means that if you build your life on the words of Jesus is in his hands to give you security is in his hands to give you stability is in his hands 
to give you substance. Yeah. Ain't God all right? Yeah. It ain't me that's keeping myself. I'm weak, but thou art mighty. He holds me. I say he holds me in his hands. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. Yeah. Yeah. It matters what you believe. I believe in God's word. I believe what God says. I believe if God be for me, who can be against me? I believe the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I believe no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yeah! you believe if you want to be able to withstand the storms of life build your foundation on the word of God and if you build your life on his word Wind may blow, storm may rise, but somebody can testify that he'll keep you. I say he'll keep you. He'll keep you from losing your mind. He'll keep you from throwing in the towel. He'll keep you and give you a second wind to run on to see what the end going to be. Don't take his word lightly. Don't, don't take it lightly. Don't take it for granted. God's word, and I'm done, will give you the security and stability that you need in order to make it in this world. God bless you. The door of the church is open. There may be one here today. You have not tried him for yourself, but his word teaches us that if you will call him for the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. If you're here and you have not opened up your heart to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, why don't you trust him today? He's given you the gift of now. If you don't have a church home, we certainly open our arms to you whereby you may grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with us. If you're here or if you're hearing my voice by way of live stream, you are saved, you've been baptized, but for whatever reason, you're straight away from God in the church. Today is a good day to resolve in your heart that you're not going to let this opportunity pass you by because as sure as you live, storms will come, but he'll keep you in the midst of your storm. The door is open. As a choir come, and if you fall in one of those three categories, why don't you make up in your mind that today is going to be the first day of the rest of your life in being in relationship with God in Christ Jesus.
Amen. God bless you. We see by way of invitation, we, we have none to come, but certainly there is always room at the cross as long as you have time. It is our prayer that if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that you will before it is eternally too late come to know him for yourself. Amen. Thank God for the gift of his word that reminds us that there is shelter in the midst of the storm, that there is security, there is stability, no matter what storm we find ourselves in when we build our lives upon the words of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God for those of you, and certainly again, we thank God for those of you uh, who are still uh, sharing by way of uh, live streaming. Uh, thank you for your financial contribution. Thank you for being responsible and faithful in your giving that we might continue to carry out the mandate of Christ, amen, and meaningful ministry to make disciples of all men, amen. So we thank God for each of you who have continued to live out uh, a sense of uh, obedience to what Christ <coughs> has called us to do and what he has called us to be, amen. 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 Let's look forward uh, to those of you who will join us, and I certainly encourage you to all you do when you Posture yourself under the teaching of God's word is put yourself in a position to be blessed. Amen. Amen. I say that's all you do when you posture yourself to sit under the teaching of God's word. You're just positioning yourself to be blessed. Amen. Because God's word is a blessing. Amen. Did you hear what I say? Yeah. It is a blessing. Amen. And so we thank God. Uh, for uh, his word. Amen. Stand to your feet. Let me give you the benediction, give you blessings. I think we've covered uh, every everything. Amen. It is now to him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with the seed and joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And all the people of God said together, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Here's my prayer. Love you.